Hey guys, this is Off Topic Games, and we have another tips, tricks, and talk for you guys. Um, I'm sorry that last week you didn't get one. I was actually just too busy, unfortunately, to make one out for you, so instead I had a matchup for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it, regardless. And, well, here's another tips, tricks, and talk. So, this one is on guarding. Um, also, from now on, I think the video title will be called OTTNT. This is just to, like, save room. But just note that OTTNT is off topic, tips, tricks, and talk. So yeah. Um, this one again is on guarding. What the point of this video is, is to try and help you learn to guard a bit more efficiently if you guys haven't been. Um, because guarding efficiently will help you throughout your game and help you survive hopefully. But generally speaking it's designed to help you win. Because you're guarding less than your opponent. So it means you're at a higher card advantage than they do. Um, so as a general note, if ge because the game is designed where you, the opponent's vanguard normally has the highest amount of power, you want to do your best to... If you can no-guard the vanguard the most without like any like problems, then you'll probably be more set off, set up in the future. Because you'll, you'll have higher card advantage, essentially. So, I guess let me start with the basics then. Because I started off a bit confusing. Um, there's different types of guards. There's Perfect Guard here. Uh, perfect Guard will always count as two cards. Because you have to discard a card for Perfect Guard. There is a 5,000 guard. And a 10,000 guard. And then there's also Quintet Walls, but I'm not going to go over them because in competitive vanguard you don't always see quintet walls so it's very unlikely what you want to note is that if a card is if uh, an attack is 15,000 um, 15,000 guard that's basically you just want to know that that's two cards minimum so if it's a 15,000 guard it's either throwing down a 10 of 5 three fives or a perfect guard that's very important to know um, because it'll matter on what you take so early on, you want to do your best to take as little damage as necessary. Um, if a card is 5,000 guard and you can afford it, then you should probably guard it. If you can no pass the vanguard and you don't need counter blast or anything, you should probably try to. If you want, this is what I really like doing, it's kind of like a pro tip. Um, if you think that the game will go on long enough and it'll be very grindy, what you want to try and do early on is try and want to pass them. Or, like, want to pass them later on. Like, you kind of just have a feel for it. You believe that they won't hit triggers, so you try one to pass. Um, this may be a bad idea, a very bad idea, but sometimes it's really good. Because one to passing a 16k lane against your opponent uh, is pretty good, because that's one card versus two cards. So it saves you an extra card, basically. Um, because what you want to do is... If a card is, if an attack is two cards or more to guard, you generally want to take it. Because if it's just one card, it's kind of a waste, I guess. You want to just optimize how many cards you can not guard with. It sounds kind of confusing. Um, but a lot of things in guarding is, it matters what's in your hand. It matters uh, what you're playing and what you're playing against. And how much counter blast you need. Uh, that's very important. So, sometimes... I don't guard a card that's one card to guard because I need counter blast. Or if I guard it, it'll be unoptimal for me. Like let's say it, you're playing against Dragonic Arbor with a cross, right? And uh, I guess this is a bad example. But if they don't hit, you get an effect. If they do hit, then they might get an effect also. It really just depends. Like you want to just do your best to optimize what you can do with the least amount of cards that you've lost per turn. So if they have an on hit effect and it's very devastating for you, you should probably guard it. If they hit a not, if they have a when it doesn't hit, then you should try and no guard it if possible. It really just depends. Um, but if you feel that a card is too much to guard, like it'll cost like three cards plus, it's better to take it unless you're at five damage, or if you're at four damage and it has a crit. Um, I feel like that's basic. The basic. Uh, idea behind guarding efficiently. 
Uh, what's also good to note is that mowing down the opponent's rear guards can also help because they either have to play more cards out of their hand, which they lose cards out of their hand. So it's very aggressive, I guess, in a way. Or they lose out on attackers. So you just kind of have to balance. In terms of, I guess, attacking, this is not really related to video, but in terms of attacking, you have to control either damage as well as the field. Assuming you're playing a vanilla game, of course. Effects are a bit different. But yeah. Um, the generic point in this video is you want to have more card advantage than your opponent and you can do that in one way by guarding efficiently. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, it might have been a bit confusing but regardless I hope you liked it and understood about it. The generic theory concept behind guarding efficiently. And yeah. Um, oh sorry I completely forgot one more thing. Uh, you have to wait, watch out for baits because you have to like, another part about guarding is no guarding, right? So, if you no guard, you have to predict what type of trigger your opponent will hit and what, what type of trigger you will hit. So, if you can no guard the vanguard and assume they don't hit nothing, don't hit anything, and you hit a trigger, then you're better off because um, if, you don't, if you do hit a trigger, it's it's either the same thing as no one hitting a trigger or you hitting a trigger and they don't. So if hitting a trigger and no guarding makes it so that you completely negate one attack from your opponent's side, that's very, very good. Because you basically save out on a card by no guarding. Um, but you just have to watch out for baits. So sometimes they want you to take it and you you fall into their trap basically. Where, okay, if you take a trigger, if you don't don't guard and you hit a trigger, that's good for the person attacking because they wanted you to do that. For some reason. Let's say they wanted to open the gate for crit or something. So, or they have like, Juggernaut Kuro at the end or some random stuff that does on hit effects. So, yeah. Again, I'm sorry. That was a bit, I forgot about that part. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you did for more content. And if you have any questions about guarding efficiency or any other tips, tricks, and talk you want to hear in the future, any basic comments, comments suggestions, or questions, please leave one in the comment box down below. And I'll see you guys all next time. Um, just a note, real fast. We will also have a old matchup for you guys today alongside this of this um, tips, tricks, and talk because I found one and it's really old but I didn't want to just toss it so I'm pulling it out for you guys it's Machinings versus Shadow Paladin Witches it's pre-Winter's Fighters collection, it's kind of old so you won't see Witches getting all this cool stuff but you'll still have a, like, a random free matchup for that day so I hope you guys enjoyed again and I'll see you all next time